This yeah. Pearson Access Next training for test administrators doesn't have a lot of security protocols in it. So that's why we're supposed, you had a second video that came out this weekend and we have more of that that we need to cover next week, hands on. Okay, number two. Um, key personnel that they, the district wants you to remember are the SAC or the STC, the school testing coordinator, that's me. <coughs> and Kathy Pagel is assisting me, Tiffany Smith. Carmen Lippincott is also assisting. And then our LTE is Robin Berenger. And Phyllis Bailey is helping her. And, and then our new LTT starts tomorrow, Stephanie Lucero. Stephanie Lucero, okay. So we have a team, but the largest or the biggest number, the 3286979 is the conference room and that's where we'll be housed out of for testing. So that's gonna be your main go-to number, okay? Let's see, slide three. Um, login, several people have wanted to know about logins. Much like you did at the beginning of the year for MAP, if you remember way back then, you get an email, you'll get an email from Pearson that has a temporary password in it. You have to log into that link, go in with that temporary password, create your own password, one that you can remember, and um, then that's your login. So you will be creating your own once you get that email. And I don't know exactly when that email will be coming to you, but any day now. Okay. Um, awesome. Some of you already got them because we went in and created users last week. So those emails should be coming through. Glad to know that you did get them. And again, it'll be your t test administrators. I don't know if they're sending them to proctors. Um, I did put the staff assignments for testing on Yammer and then sent. Um, a link to that today so um, and then next week we'll be giving you all a folder with another copy of the schedule staff assignments all kinds of information that you would want for testing um, as I said test administrators manuals will be here I pick them up at the warehouse tomorrow and we turn in the WIDA access tests so we'll get those out to you by Thursday We'll get labels with your names on them and stuff. Um, authorization tickets, those of you that did park field test last spring, <coughs> remember our CMAS, the CMAS testing, the um, science and social studies. Kids get a ticket, a one page, it's called a ticket, but it's just a printed sheet with their name on it and an authorization code specific to them for that particular session, like there's three sessions in ELA. Those are secure materials, even though they're just a printed sheet of paper, they're secure materials. We're gonna color code those, there's five different tests, so we'll have one color of paper for each test to kind of help you keep track of all of those materials. Um, let's see, seal codes, we'll show you more examples of this next week, but the test administrators will have a sheet of seal codes, there's a specific one to each unit. So unit one has a four digit seal code, unit two or test two has another seal code, and this is to prevent students from going through one test into the next test. You know how in the paper books they could flip into the next test and then we had problems, misadministrations? The seal codes help prevent that. Then um, we were told to have a way to document test irregularities or disruptions or security breaches. And you have a sample of those on the table. Um, those are this sheet right here. There's a couple on each table for you to look at. And basically, we'll go over more, that more next week. But any kind, and I will give you examples of a testing irregularity like a student walks out of the classroom to the bathroom carrying their test authorization ticket because that's a secure item. We have to document that. Okay? I know. I rolled my eyes too. So, but they want everything to be documented and it covers your butt. So <coughs> let's, let's just follow along and do that. The makeup log, um, that way you have it all on one sheet. If you have a student that is absent, 
then you'll put their name in there and mark the absent box or if they only got through part of the test then they shouldn't get a time to go back and do it unless there's an irregularity in your session like a technological issue um, but it just helps me know if they got through the test or not then you will have to move those students to a makeup session which we'll show you that again next week when we're in our small groups um, as usual you'll have an attendance sheet for your testing group that we can get to the office right away um, scratch paper thank you those of you that went on yammer I know you're tired of hearing about yammer but I think it's a platform that's going to help us out with that rather than SharePoint um, several of you voted on whether or not you thought students should use scratch paper because it is a building decision mm -hmm. looks like we will use scratch paper um, it is a secure item once it's used Students have to write their name on it, you have to collect it, turn it all back in, and then two of us have to watch it being shredded, okay? Two people have to shred it. So it becomes a secure item once they put their name on it and use it in the test. So just be aware of that, okay? And again, those will be color-coded to go with each unit as well, because they get two pieces per unit per student, okay? one piece of paper at a time. And then we'll give you um, like a handful of pencils and things, but since they're writing on scratch paper, they're not bubbling books, they can use pens or whatever writing instruments they have with them. So we're not sharpening 1,200 <coughs> pencils in the office this year for <laughs> testing. So just to let you know. Okay, then Robin created yeah. a shortcut to Park Forest. So when you go to our school website, and you click on the staff link, Big Teacher Park, when you click on that, it then takes us to, this is what Pearson Access Next looks like. Park is on the platform called Pearson Access Next. When they get to CMAS, it's Pearson Access. Okay, it's a different assessment platform. There's like four different assessment platforms for all of these tests. <coughs> but this is the one you're going to use. We've already talked about how you're gonna get your login. Um, if you forget your password or your username, but your username should be your long email, okay? Your long email with your proper name, Edward Mulvey, or, okay? So it'll be your long email, so your First name dot last name at d11.org and then whatever, that's your user. And then your password is whatever you create. I don't think it let you do your district login, but I try it and see. Try it and see, because this has changed every day. So I'm not sure if that's changed from last week when I went through training. Um, let's see, no, that's okay. Um, oh, if you forget your password and you email for that, it takes about, might take 10 to 15 minutes to get it. So don't do that as your students are entering the classroom <laughs> for testing. Please don't do that. But we all do forget. We all have those moments. If you do, we'll roll with it. But I didn't even touch it. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. Home screen. Um, once you log in, that's what the home screen looks like. And then we'll walk you through this more next week. We've created sessions for each person. You can go ahead and go to the next one. We had to name the sessions a certain way. They had to have a code for the school, and it's not 251. That's a district code. This is the state code, 8457. So every session has the school code, then we have to have a grade attached. We have to have the content, whether it's ELA or math. Now, since half of the school's testing in the morning and half is testing in the afternoon, as we create each of these groups one by one from a, a grade level alpha list, to help us keep it straight as we build these groups, we have AM and PM in each of those session titles just to help us too. Okay, um, we have to create, 
Once you create the ELA groups, you can't just roll them into a math group. You get to go back into the whole thing and recreate the math group of the same exact students. So um, hopefully we get it right both times, right? The cool thing about this system is once you get everybody assigned to a group, you can go back in and see how many eighth graders are left and who they are. Are they like um, our significant needs kids or whatever. So there's some weird titled groups in there like gone students eighth grade. There's some students that are still listed in there that no longer go to school here. But unless they have officially dropped, um, just because the kids tell us they're gone doesn't necessarily mean we're going to put them in that group. So anyway, when you go in and look up where your testing group is, this is how you're going to find who your kids are, okay? And we don't have all the groups built yet. Um, we do have a grade six ELA makeup group, one for an ELA makeup group for each grade level, and a math group for each grade level. Laura Behan is going to be in charge of that. So we will have her down probably in 162. And if a student misses the first day of testing, then the second day, instead of going with a regular testing group, they're going to go in and take test one with her while everybody else is taking test two. Because none of the five tests take the same amount of time. If they all took 70 minutes, then we could take a test one in with a whole bunch of test two kids but they all are different times. So we have to have a makeup room. However, we can test all three grade levels together. Um, let's see, that's the main part I needed on that. Okay, then I said 16. So these slides are the ones that you wa um, saw as you watch the Pearson Access Next video from the district. So I'm gonna flip through a lot of these slides. I'm going now to slide 16 because um, I don't want to cover all of the things that they covered for you. Okay, I'm trying to honor that. I'm trying to just point out the, the highlighted things. Um, on slide 16, <laughs> be sure, you see down here it says click to test audio. When students are starting to log in, before they have put in their username, and the password which is on their authorization ticket they need to plug in their headphones and test that audio is if the if we missed one out of the 500 and umpteen computers and the sound doesn't work or it worked when we tested it but it doesn't now we can't do anything about it okay then that student cannot access audio during their test once they log in, they can't adjust it. They can't adjust it. They Thank can you. adjust it on their head, but not on the computer. Okay. So they have to test the audio, and that'll be in your test administration directions, okay? And then we'll talk about that next week as well when we're in our small group stuff. So be very diligent. Lana, mm -hmm. make sure that you check the side knob thing because you keep the whole time. Right, make sure you check the audio on the side <coughs> so that they haven't moved those, the, the volume, basically. So we're getting headphones provided? The there will be headphones provided. Students Listen. cannot bring their own headphones. We have beautiful <coughs> headphones provided for all of our students. So they're nice, but they're not pretty. So I don't think you'll have trouble with them walking out um, anyway. And they're a coveted item because Robin was on the ball and ordered a whole bunch when we were asked how many we wanted to order. Some schools didn't order enough and now they're trying to scavenge. <coughs> Excuse me. And we got them. So don't tell anybody because we actually we need all of them. Especially when it comes to the end of year one. Yeah. I think we'll anyway. Um, slide 23. Tiffany is on it for me. Um, there are a whole bunch, or there's probably six to eight error codes that um, they have gone through and done screenshots and things, which I think you saw, hopefully you saw it in the video. We'll talk more about that again next week when we're in our small <coughs> PLC groups. But the resumed uploaded one is one that's very critical 
and there is a slide, I think it was slide 39, that talks about how to resolve that. That is one that's very critical that we're really going to work on next week. So I just wanted to point that out and put that in your level of awareness with all the other stuff. Because if a student hadn't exited a test session properly, mm -hmm. they cannot go into the next test session. So it will hold up, could hold up your whole group getting started because one kid didn't submit their questions at the end of the test. So again, we'll walk you through that next week in our small groups. But there's so much information that I was trying to highlight the things that really need to stick up here for you. Aside from sticking, posted some things. Okay, number 40, or slide number 40. Now, I don't know, maybe it was humorous to me this weekend when I was finishing this up. However, this is how I felt when I was trying to figure all this out and what I needed to share with you. And it felt like a big error message for me. But sometimes there's just so much, it was like we were out of order. In the, as we sat through four hours of training last week <clears throat> in one sitting, there were lots of glazed looks and a lot of people with that. So, bring a little bit of humor to it. If you get to that point, we're here to help you with your stress. We're here to help you figure out where to go next, okay? So, I just want you to know that if you get to that point, stop, take a breath, let us know what you need, and if we don't have the answers, which this year I don't have a lot of answers, but I will work to find them for you, okay? So, just that little error message. Next one. So this is kind of a little cheat sheet and Robin has one that she's going to put in that staff folder that you get next week of the different error codes <coughs> and, the, and the troubleshooting that you can do for those error codes. Okay? And again, we'll demo those. Um, from what I know, the next Java update was like April 15th. Not Java. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they were talking about that, um, so I think maybe we might get through park without having some of those updates come through, so huh. let's hope. Um, next slide, active administration. You all that have done any kind of testing know what it means to be an active proctor, so just yes. be careful. I'm not going to read this to you, but be, be sure that you are doing everything that you're supposed to at all times, okay? You do get to have your computer on because you are monitoring the test, but make sure you don't have other stuff open and things like that. Um, like it says, no checking email, lesson planning, things like that. Um, just be careful about all that, okay? Next one, permitted support. Last year, um, they had a thing about, and I don't, maybe those of you that did CMAS, but Teachers could read what was in the blue box. This year, you cannot read what's in that blue box, okay? So you'll know that when you see it, that that blue box, remember, don't read what, anything that's in the blue box. Now, in the video that you watched, it says that you can clarify, this is new this year, you can clarify test directions, not questions. Okay, sometimes I think we hear that we can clarify and we're teachers and we want to help. That's our nature. Just remember, once you read the general directions that are scripted, if there's truly somebody who doesn't understand the directions, you can clarify only the directions. Okay? The, the script right not on the screen. The script is written on the screen, yes. This, but the script that you have, not the, because I think that's the confusion. Because the blue box is the directions on ah, the screen. Gotcha. But you can clarify from your script. From your screen. manual. Yes, you can clarify from your manual. Thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recall that we really had a lot of issue with that last year or so um, when we did CMAS and the park field test. Maybe in some buildings they did, but here we didn't seem to. Um, this year, that's new. Um, if a student is not working, of course, you can use the proximity like you do. Go out and have tuna with onions for lunch, okay? <laughs> Go out and stand next to them, breathe on them. Um, but you can say, 
Chris, please continue working. You can say that to them. Please continue working. You can say their name. Please continue working. Okay? So that's new this year. And it's in writing. Let's see. Next one. Really don't. You guys know the time frame on those. Um, 46. Yes. All right. Um, the timing options. So once they are done and they've logged out of the test, students can read a fiction book. All right. They can have a book to read in there or they can sit quietly. Those are their two options. All right. Which really is option A and option C. So you can give them both options. They can sit quietly or read a fiction book. All right, as long as they're quiet, you it doesn't matter. As a school? Yes, as a school, yes ma'am. So we need to make sure they have some reading material or as many of you do have books in your room available for them, for those kids who conveniently forget well, we to check out. we have a book fair next week. Woohoo! So and there is a book fair sign up sheet going around as well. So no homework and no non-fiction reading, fiction books. Okay. Fiction books, yes ma'am, so no not homework. not magazines or... Not magazines, I will check. I don't think we can, but I will double check. I don't know. Um, for now, let's just stick with fiction books like we always have. If we get permission, yeah, um, because then it opens a lot of doors. So The other thing is the stand and stretch break. Now this is something that's new and I know he, he did say it's a sack and school decision. There are a number of things that can go wrong when you do a stand and stretch break. They are to be absolutely silent, <laughs> like that's going to happen for three whole minutes, 180 seconds. Mm -mm, it ain't happening. You have to, if they're on a desktop, they have to shut their monitor off. Most of them are on laptops, so you're going to have to have manila folders to cover their screens oh. so nobody looks at the screens. Um, so there's several things. So what we've decided, and I've talked with, with Jim and myself, and the other folks that went through training, it just scares the hell out of me to do that. So I'm gonna say no, okay? Yay. Now if we find after a, a couple days that we absolutely needed that in some areas, then come talk to me, okay? Um, but because then you also have to add those three minutes to the session time. Laura Grant has some students that have frequent breaks written in their IEP. I've got some special ed, small groups and some ELL small group situations where we might be working that out within those groups because of their formal plans but for the general public no stand and stretch breaks okay so if you have dire concern with that come chat with me okay but there's just so many things that can happen I don't want to set anybody up for issues okay all right communication plan now, I had to include this photo because when Robin went through training, she sent me this via email as she was thinking about getting all of the computers ready for testing. So, if anyway, we're, we're hoping we're not going to look like that then because our job, and we were talking today truly, our job is to make your job easy, okay? And I know I've told a couple, like I think when I met with special ed, this testing has had me more stressed than I've ever been and I'm trying really hard not to share that with you. If I'm passing it on to you, I want you to put me in check and I invite you to do that, all right? Because that is not what I want to do is to pass my stress to you. I want to try to be over prepared so that your stress is minimal, okay? so. You tell me, I invite you to tell me if that's the case. So anyway, do not call district assessment on your own. Do not call CDE on your own. Do not email CDE. Do not go out to dinner and talk about the questions on the test or any kind of testing situation. You never know who's listening. There are all kinds of things that have, crazy things that have happened, very unfortunate. Don't put yourself in that situation, okay? 
just be careful. We're all human. So, <laughs> all right. Um, okay. You guys hanging in there? We just have a little more stuff to go. All right. I put some of the FAQs in here that the district had put in. And then on the second page of FAQs are Swigert specific questions and answers that have already been asked. And these are also the ones that are put on Yammer. Um, how many of you, show of hands, would like to actually see what Yammer looks like if I were to show you here at the end of training tonight after everybody's done? Anybody want to hang and see it? Okay, it's all good. It's all good. I'm just, because the R drive is such a pain and I've heard people complain about SharePoint, we've started using Yammer. Um, so, okay, next one, testing irregularities. Slide 50. I've already talked about the testing irregularities form. We just have to document that and you don't have to write a novel on it, just a few, a few sentences. Um, a student phone is seen or heard during testing. That one is a, a possibility. So um, we'll have a, I'll talk in a minute about how we're gonna handle student phones. So next one, please. And there's just a sample of the form. Okay. Next, 52. Okay. Um, I'll get back to the cell phone thing, though. All right. I'm trying to keep track of time. I've got about 15 minutes, and I want to be done then. So and if you guys can kind of help. Becky said the background noise picks up, too. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's been here most of the Love having our own tech stuff here. This is awesome. So in order to make sure that all students have their computer charged and ready to go for testing, we have a plan. So Monday, March 2nd, the day before testing starts, um, I will have testing groups posted on Thursday. I have them, I have them done, but I want to double check a, about a dozen kids just to make sure on their extended time. Um, because I want it as accurate as possible when I give it to you. Then we're going to have first period teachers make sure they notify the students who their testing group is. So they will know on Monday, March 2nd, what they're, where they're going to go for testing. Okay? So at 3.05, the start of sixth period, all seventh graders are going to take their laptops that they have with them. They're going to go to their testing room which is gonna be one of the six core teachers, the main core teachers. Um, I know some of you are split between several grade levels. And, or if they're in special ed or ELL. So they're gonna take their computer, plug it in in their testing administrator's room. Robin has ordered um, power strips. Power strips, thank you, and extension cords. So we have tons of the like $700 worth of those coming. So you can plug them in and they're charged overnight. Okay, then they, so those they're kids, not going in a cart, they're just gonna be snapped. They're just going to, we'll, we'll be talking more with you about what that will look like next in, in your PLC. But they will probably be stacked some, they will have to be. Because carts were, Robin's been pricing. $2,500. For a, for a for cart carts. of 30. Okay. Empty. So we couldn't, we, anyway, we've looked at a lot of options, so we finally got the $700 power strips and extension cords. So, seventh grade will take them to their testing groups, plug them in, and go back to sixth period. Then at 3.30, roughly right in there, all eighth graders will take their laptops, go to their testing rooms, plug them in, and go back to their sixth period. Okay? Sixth graders cannot test on netbooks, okay? Remember, they're too small, the resolution isn't, isn't right. Um, sometimes part of the questions are cut off. So sixth graders, which when you look at that testing assignment sheet on <coughs> Yammer, um, sixth grade will be testing in the library area. We're looking at using Mac Labs. We have computers we're gonna be putting in here. We'll use 131. 
we'll, we'll use some of 162 for probably just the makeup. So we think we can get half of the sixth graders around in this area. I'm setting up a lab tomorrow at 142. 142, we did decide to add um, an additional lab space for 142. So sixth graders will all be in the main building, so we're not worried about collecting or plugging in sixth grader netbooks at this point. Okay, so that's why it's just seventh and eighth grade. We cannot test on those. So, as you noticed, maybe on the rest of that print, testing is done on the 11th, the following Wednesday. So we have three days in a row of English language arts tests. We have a Friday, the 6th of March, Monday, the 9th of March. The computers will need to stay plugged in. We're not handing them back and then redoing in that all on the following Monday. Mr. Nason had approved this. Um, so then they're ready for students when they take the math tests on March 10th and March 11th. So there's basically no okay. computer access? No so computer. For, like two weeks. For, for, I believe it's like eight or nine days. Okay. Eight or nine school days. So you have some, you have yeah. some time to plan on that. All right, Swigert's testing procedures. Next one, thank you. Um, this is just the basic stuff. Those of you that have been here for CSAP, TCAP, whatever it was called, um, for however long you've been here. On testing days, for those of you that are testing in the morning group, all right, and that's on the staff assignment sheet, um, you will check out your materials from the conference room and we'll have a sign-up sheet. You can sign up for a time to come get them before school. You'll need to return those as soon as you can after testing. Now, each testing block is two hours. Some of the tests only need 60 minutes. Now, that doesn't include handing out testing materials and getting kids started. So, you may need 100 of those 120 minutes for a 60 minute test. Does that make sense? Yep. By the time you do all the logistics. So, if your students are all done with testing before that two hour break is done, you can have your proctor stay with the students and you can come check in your materials before the end of the testing session as long as every student is done, okay? Or you can turn them in right after the session. If you have a planning period, that's awesome. If you don't, then we'll come to you after that testing session and check your materials in from you, okay? Afternoon, folks, if you can check them out as close as you can as when the afternoon testing session starts, which I believe is at 12.35, no, sorry, 1.45, thank you. 1.45 um, will be in the conference room to help check those out, and the check-in procedure will be the same. All your students, once they're all done, if your proctor hangs out in there with the students, you can go ahead and bring your materials back to us, okay? Um, even if one student takes the whole time, you have to keep the session going and maintain a testing environment. All right. Prior to testing, a test administrator to-do list. And test administrators are your main, your core teachers, okay? Except Enterman and Behan and then Lewis, Cleary, Mulvey, <coughs> Bell, Kurth, Grant. I think Gerardin. I've got them all. Gerardin. Gerardin is a proctor. Um, those are the test administrators for right now. Laura's considered a test administrator. Tricia will be as well. We'll talk more about that. So everybody actually needs to watch both videos if you haven't. All right, both videos. Um, attend today's training or people will be watching this video and then attend one of the PLC trainings next week and again I'll post that I'll send out the schedule for the exploratory folks so you can find a time that fits within your schedule and maybe we'll probably tape one of those because if there's somebody who can't make any of those four, you at least have the option for that. you're volunteering at the book fair, of course. Of course. Um, be sure when you get that, that test administrator's manual that you do read it, at least the sections for what you are testing, okay? 
it's imperative that you read it since this is the first year for this. There is some new, there is a lot of new stuff. Four days prior, okay, so you know how we always do room checks? You need to cover all your instructional materials in the room. If in doubt, cover it up. I know that Kristen Nason, I think, sent out to the language arts folks a list of things from um, my SAC manual that needed to be covered, but it's not all inclusive. So if in doubt, just cover it up. We'll do room checks starting on Thursday, February 26th. So that's three days before testing starts that we'll start checking those test administrator classrooms. All right? just to give you a time frame. Um, and of course, check your testing room. Eric Mason, the new director of assessment, said if he comes in and checks out a testing environment and he can see another student's computer from where he's sitting, we cannot use that testing environment. I don't know if there's going to be what? spot checks or anything. We have way too many kids in a room for that. I know. So, no, like <coughs> we will be buying Manila folders. Yeah. If we have to have manila folders yeah. taped or behind um, a laptop, so your folder sits behind your laptop like this, like a study carol. So it sits behind your laptop. Or if you can see over here. Um, we'll, we'll be working on that, okay? So think about, they suggested, they suggested that maybe you seat your students in a circle. I know space, I know, I understand. Well, it's not physically possible. I, I understand. So you know what, if you, if you think about it and you can't figure it, let me invite them out yeah. and see what suggestions. So I know, eighth grade has some human, well, sixth grade, sixth grade and seventh grade are 25. So you all have pretty big testing groups. So just give it some thought, but know that we can use manila folders, not textbooks, <laughs> not textbooks, but we'll order a whole bunch of manila folders. They said you can tape a folder to the laptop. I don't know. I've been thinking about other ways to do this. If anybody has some creative ideas, let's do that. Hoods. I don't know. Can we get those dog cones? <laughs> That would be the dog cones would be a non-standard accommodation. So we were too late to get those approved. So, guys, I I'm sorry, sorry for that. I think um, it would be good to invite them out just to get some suggestions. On yeah, it. if we can't have kids in rows, which we obviously can't, because they can. so I mean, no, I'm not you guys. A manila envelope, I, I, I you know, agree, so, a, a so manila folder, so I don't want to make a bigger deal out of that than it has to be, but, no, but that is something that they stress. <coughs> so I will ask them, they did say that we can, or, anyway, I'll check into ordering some study carols as well, some cardboard study carols. Yeah, Dollar Tree. It takes two weeks to get them though. I, well, I am. And it, we don't have two weeks. Okay. So, okay, guys, hang, stay with me, okay? Got got your level of concern up a little higher than what I anticipated. So, um, let let that incubate. We are crowded. We're not the only school that's crowded. So I will work on that for you. Let it incubate. Maybe you come up with some creative ideas as well that are viable. <laughs> Let me say viable creative ideas. How about that? Okay. Um, okay. Prior to testing then, we will send home an auto call to all students to remind parents that students are testing. Please make sure they get a good night's sleep. They get breakfast here, so we got that one down. Um, we'll send that home on Monday, March 2nd, and then we'll send one home the following week to remind them about math. And the 8th is Kayla's favorite Yes. <laughs> you already knew that happens every year. That's yeah. why we're testing on Tuesday, yeah. not Monday. Ain't, ain't playing that game again. That was a nightmare. Okay. Now, before starting a testing session, <coughs> students carry their cell phones, right? 
So at the end of, or right towards the end of the breakfast period, period one, I'll make an announcement like last year, those of you that were here. Students, you need to turn off your cell phones or any electronic devices. Put them in your locker during passing period before you go to your testing group. If they don't turn them off and we hear cell phones during <coughs> testing, they belong to us in the office till at least the end of the day. So you can let them know that. So we're going to remind them then to put them in there during passing period. Then when they get to their testing period, the <coughs> test administrator before they start testing will ask students, does anybody have a cell phone on them? We'll collect them, put the kids' names on them, put them in envelopes, <coughs> set them outside of your testing door. We'll pick them up and return them right before the testing block is done, towards the end of that two hours. So you can hand it back out to them at the end of the period. Otherwise, if they leave them in their locker and they don't turn them off, they don't get them until the end of the day. So it's in their best interest to just give it to you and they get it back right at the end of testing. So make sure you secure your own cell phone too because I know they are like an appendage for us. Even on break times, if we pull it out and we want to check our email, you don't want to do that. You don't want to have your cell phone out. So I would encourage you to leave it in your car or whatever you need to do, your adults. Just be careful with that so you don't compromise yourself. Okay? That's all I want. You don't need that headache. All right. During testing, seal codes. We'll talk more about that next week. Timing boxes. Um... I've made a timing box for each testing unit because each one has a certain amount of time. So this will help you remember like math has, math two has 70 minutes. So you can use, these will be in your testing packets. You can use these so you can put your start time and your stop time right there on the board for your students. You don't have to use them. It's just another little tool for you if you want to help the kids know how many minutes they have too. Sometimes that visual is helpful as they pace themselves through that. Again, no stand and stretch breaks except for those specific groups. Remember, you can clarify directions only, not questions. And once testing starts, you cannot help with navigation tools. Okay. All right, during testing, next one, please. Um, Bathroom, student has to be escorted one at a time to and from the bathroom. And I have basically one proctor, excuse me, one proctor to two test administrators. So somebody's going to be going between two test administrators. So you should have somebody available all the time to escort students to and from the bathroom. There's also going to be about a half dozen people in the hallway to help out with those kind of situations. The test administrator, this is different. Test administrators, and they stress this in our SAC training, are not to leave, like go take a 20 or 30 minute break like we could with TCAP. You can go to the bathroom, but you're supposed to be there monitoring that session the whole time, okay? They have changed that this year for PARC. But you'll have your proctor in there at least 50% of the time so it's not like it's on you 100%. But we can go to the bathroom. You can go to the bathroom. And proctors, I'm going to ask you to watch what the test administrators do on that computer so you can resume students too. You're not there just to walk around, put holes in your shoes. You're there to help with that test administration, okay? So it's okay for you to do that. I know sometimes we don't feel comfortable doing that, but you're there as a team, okay? Um, one thing that in my training that I was told, I don't know if you guys were, but at no time is a computer allowed to leave the room. So um, I'll be on radio, the LTT will be on radio too. If there are any tech issues, we come in, the computer doesn't leave. Thank you. Because if a test question is up on the screen, that is considered a secure item. It cannot leave the testing room. Then think about it like that, huh? It cannot leave the testing room and then we have a test administration. Black, okay. I come in. So if you can write question down on that, um, please. <coughs> Student misconduct. I really want to address this one. This one is critical. Um, 
because Eric Mason stated in the video, the test administrator has the authority to remove a student for misconduct at any time following SAC school protocol. So then they put it right back on me, the building, admin, whatever. So rather than have, because when that happens, if you were to remove a student, say, Scoggins, get out of here. You can't keep your mouth shut. You're not focusing. Get out of here. Okay? So bless her heart. She's not feeling good today. Um, then what we have to do is we have to go in and we have to move Amy from this test session to this test session. Then we have to go in and get a different authorization ticket and a different seal code. So it's timely to do that. If six different people kick a student out within a 10 minute time frame, those students are going to lose a lot of testing time by the time we get them all set up in another session. So, I'm not saying you can't do that, but we'll have grade level administrators and Trisha Enerman and Mr. Hesselberg, all right, Mr. H is what the kids say. They're going to be assisting with that too because if we do remove a student for misconduct, they can't handle it in that testing setting and administration confirms with you, the test administrator, that yeah, we better find another location, then Ms. Ms. Enerman will get to be the test administrator for that student, okay? So I just want you to know it's not as easy as picking up a book and taking them to another setting. There's some different things within the computer system that can take a while to get that done. Um, so we just want to have a conference about that with the grade level administrator when that situation happens because you will have some. Also team leads, Heather, Tammy, Zach, send me your hot list or send them, send it to me and I will get it to Most of add team. <laughs> they are, so just Zach's group. Um, if you send me the hot list by the end of the week, I will take it to add team on Monday and we'll talk to those kids. For those of you that haven't been here before, our hot list is those kids that we anticipate maybe a little bit squirrely, like Scoggins in testing. So, um, so get us that hot list. All right, hang with me guys, I'm almost there. Um, error messages, we talked about that. You'll have a reference sheet. We'll demo those for you next week. We've got fake student accounts. So we're gonna set up like a live testing session with you in your PLCs next week. So you can actually see, that's what I always hated about online testing, is to try to give you training, but I can't show you what it's like because it's not a lot. So anyway, they've helped us with that now. Remember that redirection script. Leif, please continue working, okay? Um, and remind them of to when they are done, what they can do. Sit quietly or read that book. All right, after testing, collect, you can collect those authorization tickets before testing is done. Um, if a kid though gets kicked out of their test and you have to log them back in, if you collect them too early, you'll have to get them back out because they have to use that password on it. So I would collect them towards the end of the testing session. Please alphabetize those for us before you turn them back in. Um, that just helps us out a lot. And make sure you collect all the scratch paper because it is a secure item once it's used and once the students write their name on it. And collect any pencils and you can keep them for your group. You don't have to turn the pencils back into us. Um, I think that's, whoop, that's it. Then